Hi, I'm Adam Loretz from the Filmmakers Workshop, and today my special guest is Miles Buller, executive producer at uh, World Seed Studios, who invest in new talent. Hi, Adam. It's very nice to meet you, and uh, you're very welcome. Looking forward to it. So, Miles, tell me about The Darkest Dawn. It's, it's been termed a micro-buster, and it was made in conjunction with Pinewood Studios. Tell me more about uh, the collaboration with Pinewood, perhaps a bit about the micro buster concept and the kind of films that you're looking to produce together. Sure. Uh, that's that, that's like three questions, but I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll give it a go, Adam. Uh, Wild Seed Studios is very much, we call ourselves an incubator. So we're all about trying to find uh, new and emerging talent and really uh, kind of enable them and help them to take what they do to the next level. So we set up four years ago and we uh, we raised some money so that we could make these what we call micro investments into new projects. And uh, you're absolutely right. We do invest in, in micro budget films, in adult comedy and drama, uh, lots of web series. Uh, animation for adults but also for kids so we have a show on Disney at the moment called uh, Counterfeit Cat a big animated series and we have animations on BBC three and we're doing live action shows for full screen and for developments for Channel 4 but um, but probably are of, of the things that we financed ourselves the, the highest profile things are the movies and about four years one of the first people we met actually was called Drew Casson hello um, a young creator who'd been making YouTube videos since he was uh, a teenager. And he was introduced to us and said he, he wanted to make something with us. So we did what we, we, did what we set out to do, which is make, make an investment in him um, to create what we thought then actually was going to be a web series called Hungerford. And um, we, gave him, we, we gave him access to one of our £10,000 budgets and we shot... Uh, we shot a web series called Hungerford uh, for £10,000. And, and we, um, we looked at it when we'd finished shooting it and we thought, wow, this is quite interesting. This is something, there's something unexpected happened here. And we, uh, we, we cut it together to, at first as a web series, as a nine-part series. That didn't really work, to be honest. So we then cut it together as a single. And it was about 120 minutes long. And we cut about um, 40 minutes out of it. And we, re we reshot uh, for three days. And we ended up with an 80-minute feature film. Fantastic. And, uh, and uh, it was kind of a surprise, the learning process to us. And, uh, you know, the cast and the average age of the cast and crew, uh, other than myself and my business partner, you know, was probably about 20. And we ended up getting the, the kind of breakthrough moment for us as we ended up getting selected for the Sci-Fi London Film Festival by uh, Louis Savvy, the brilliant Louis Savvy. And he gave us a really good slot at the film festival and really helped us promote that film. And it, and it then went on to pick up some really good awards at different festivals yeah. and sort of launched, uh, launched our whole movie making uh, undertaking and, and really gave us a taste for making these low budget films, which are kind of low risk financially. Yeah. But we tried to make them uh, as punchy and as big as possible. So lots of special effects and... We didn't want to make sort of dramas. There's um, in the UK something like 25% of films made in, by British producers are dramas, yeah. and they only account for 7% 7, 7 of the box office. So we really wanted to do something um, more uh, more mainstream, more entertaining, but really try and make them punky and fun and, and low budget and British. Fantastic. So the first two films you've made have been with Drew Casson. Is, is, yes. is there anything else in development? Yes, absolutely. We have three or four other films. Uh, we'd love to do another film with Drew at some point. He's he's busy uh, making a short at the moment on his own on his own account, which uh, which I'm sure will be fantastic. And then hopefully we'll speak to him again. And well, we we speak to him all the time, but hopefully we'll work with him again on something else. But yeah, we have we have four other films that we're developing at the moment, and hopefully we'll be announcing which one of those is going to go into production uh, in the next month or two. Yeah. So Drew's skill set is quite. Um, I've interviewed Drew before. He's a great. He's a yeah. very effervescent character. Oh, he's fantastic. Uh, and and yeah. multi multi talented. So I mean, in terms of the kind of uh, filmmakers and contributors that you're looking to work with, like on these other four projects, uh, is there a yeah. common sort of yeah. skill set, a type of person? Um, to be honest, not really. I mean, when we found him, you know, we really really admired his visual effects skills. We really admired his directorial skills and the kind of energy he managed to get into his camera work and 
and everything he did was sort of infused with a fantastic energy and panache, if you like. And, you know, where we felt we could really help him most was with writing and character development and storytelling. And so, you know, we spent a lot of time with him. My business partner, Jesse Cleverly, did on working on the script and helping develop the characters, you know, figuring out storytelling, the tricks of the trade. And, and that's where we were able to sort of add value, really, to what he was doing. And, and he taught us, frankly, um, a whole host of stuff about visual effects. And, you know, and, and, and he didn't need any coaching and directing, that's for sure. Of the other people that we work with, you know, some of them are writers, some of them are directors. Some of them are actors who um, who are writing their first projects. And so really, we just try and find out if we, if we always try and work with someone where we can add value, where we can add something, you know, and whether it's helping them, uh, showing them how you can make a film for £50,000, <laughs> um, which is, you know, the budget, the ceiling that we work to at the moment or helping them with the writing or whatever it is, uh, helping them find visual effects artists that can, that can create visual effects or whatever it is, we, we try and find a way of adding value. Okay. For the audience that, that we're addressing today, there yeah. are lots of people with their own kit and cameras, yep. uh, yep. et cetera. Is there a way that Wildseed connects with, with uh, people with the technical skills? Do, do you have a, a pool of talent that you utilize or how does that work? So the main sort of training that we do, if you like, is on on script development. So we have a we we find that the thing that people need most or ask for most support with is character development and script development. And and the thing that we look for in a project is fantastic characters, and and we build out from there really. So so we follow the. Uh, we use the work of a, of a woman called Laurie Hutzler, who has a who has a website called the Emotional Toolbox, and she's a, a kind of screenwriting guru and doctor. Yeah. And we we like what she does very much, and so we often uh, point people in her direction, or we uh, use some of her methodologies for character development. So that's something that we that's something that we do. On the technical side. Yeah, we find that there are a huge number of people out there with remarkable technical skills that, you know, we're, we're working now with a generation that's grown up very, very comfortable with different types of technology. Yeah. And there's very little we can teach them about uh, about how to use the equipment that they're probably off, sometimes more familiar with than we are. Yes, we do. Uh, we do absolutely use outside crew, but it does tend to be that directors or creators work with people with whom they're already familiar. So. Right. So we, you know, if we have a creator, uh, a writer or a director, they often come with the key crew that, that they want to work with. And, you know, we obviously want to make sure that they, those people are competent and they can, they, can do, uh, they can do a good job, more than competent, that they've got talent and flair. But we're obviously, you know, obviously they don't always know the whole crew. So we're, off, we're, ha we're happy to help find people to support, to support them. I mean, we, we know there's a sound guy, Rob Saunders, that we work with a lot who... Sound is incredibly important when you're making low-budget projects. It's it's possibly more important than pictures. People will watch something with variable quality pictures, but if they can't hear what's going on, they're they're lost. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. We we focus a lot on that, um, and as I say, we're we're always trying to find out you know what what are people's core skill sets and how can we help? How can we bring other resources or other skills or other expertise to that or experience to support that and make make the project as good as it can be. Fantastic. The Darkest Dawn has, has been yes. released. Give us the lowdown on The Darkest Dawn and its reception. So really good. You know, uh, don't anyone, don't let anyone ever convince you that it isn't anything other than hard work to release a movie digitally. It's, um, you know, we released it on November the 1st. We were on about half a dozen digital platforms, so uh, DTO, pl download to own platforms. So principally, obviously, uh, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, but also the Sky Store, Wacky, Ubiquity, and Microsoft. It's been really, really interesting to track it. And, you know, we, we charted really, really well on iTunes and got in, you know, we were the leading independent film. We were number two in all sci-fi and fantasy. Um, uh, yeah, we were in the top 30 films on iTunes in the first few weeks, which was really, really gratifying and very helpful. And then we got, uh, we got some theatrical screenings. So the Watershed, our local cinema in Bristol, the Watershed booked the film for a five-night run, which was yeah. also really, really interesting. And it, we're also on In Home in Manchester. And, uh, and we're just now sort of starting to think about an international rollout and, and talking to potential... Uh, partners for how we can roll out the film internationally but it's a you know it, it's a long old process that yeah. 
the, the traditional movie model is throw everything at the opening weekend, make a massive splash. And then uh, if it does well, you know, pile in after it. And, uh, you know, they, the movie studios calculate the profitability of a film based on three days takings in the opening weekend. Um, this is very, very different. This is about building, um, you know, a sustained campaign yeah. to keep to keep the, the film surfacing and keep it in people's minds and make people curious to see it and uh, have it as widely distributed as you can so that you may only be selling, you know, half a dozen copies a month on one, on a platform. But if you're on 30 platforms, then that starts to turn into, you know, an interesting proposition. So. Cool. So it's a really and using social media and and trying to keep trying to keep the cost of the marketing down because again you can spend a fortune on marketing where and that that would be that would be um, counterproductive in terms of keeping the budget low uh, and trying to keep the marketing budget low as well. Right. In in terms of the collaboration with Pinewood, was that yeah. something that came up after Hungerford? Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so they saw what we were doing and we were introduced to Pinewood. They saw what we were doing and I think we were already committed to the production of The Darkest Dawn. Um, and they were really excited by it. You know, they're really interested in, you know, where is filmmaking going and how is what is the future of film distribution? And, you know, we may not have all the answers, but we're certainly asking a lot of interesting questions. So I think they wanted to, um, you know, to, to get involved so that they could learn from uh, al alongside us about about the future of film distribution and, and filmmaking and, and how what the new models were going to be. I mean, they understand they understand the traditional model very, very well. But there, there are very few people in the UK, there are a few more in the States, but very few people in the UK kind of systematically going about uh, digital first releases in the way that we are. So I think they were, you know, that's that, that was their motivation, I think, to get involved. And so they, they really supported us heavily with the marketing of of the darkest dawn yeah. that was their that's that's been their principal um uh, involvement so far in in terms of distribution but not so much production the production side i mean i take it no so that, that you know that we couldn't afford their 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 facilities on our budgets but that that wasn't the, that wasn't the idea i mean they wanted to they wanted to meet new filmmakers they obviously want filmmakers to think fondly of pinewood so that when they're making their 100 million dollar movies they're thinking that pinewood uh, would be a great place to do that absolutely um, but they're not, they're not expecting us to use their studios or facilities uh, at this stage. Bringing together this uh, traditional concept of uh, a, a release and a broadcast, because yeah. web, web is now broadcast. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. exciting yeah. times. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we see, because we do kids, and one of the reasons we do kids is because they are the sort of canary in the coal mine, if you like. They are an indication of how media is going to be consumed in the future that you know uh, uh, one of our one of our colleagues here has just moved house and she hasn't she's got very bad internet in her new house it's not yet installed mm -hmm. and she's got a traditional old aerial on um, on the roof so she said to her kids oh don't worry um, you know you can still watch television mm -hmm. and they were utterly bewildered and uh, and appalled you know that they could only watch their their favorite shows at a certain time on yeah. a certain channel um and uh, couldn't understand it. And, and you know, there's absolutely no way that the generation growing up, uh, you know, uh, embracing media at the moment is going to, are going to be interested in something that they can't get on demand. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I've just literally moved in November and we ha the internet was off for two days and I didn't hear the last of it. <laughs> it, it went on and on. Absolutely. Um, so um, moving on from, from movies, your, yeah. your background uh, is an, as an executive producer at Aardman and, and yes. at Wildseed. Yes. And uh, you've enjoyed plenty of success in both now. For, for all those animators out there, what, what would be your top three tips for producing uh, a kids animated series? What do you a really look for? A kids animated series? Um, so, um, so first of all, we're looking for great characters. I mean, it, this is a theme that runs through everything that we do. So we get a lot of proposals sent to us, and I'll explain how to um, uh, send a proposal to us a bit later on. But we get, a, we get a lot of proposals sent to us where, you know, there's been an incredible world or an incredible concept worked out. Um, but actually, when you look at it, there's very little uh, thought being given or not enough thought being given to the central characters. And, you know, if you think about your favorite shows, SpongeBob, The Simpsons, uh, Gumball, Counterfeit Cat, then um, they all have really distinctive and interesting characters at the heart of them. And those are characters that, I mean, our, our kind of 
our kind of uh, log line is we, we're interested in characters that the audience wants to be or be with. Yeah. And um, and that is the first and foremost exactly what we're looking for. So and, and often with animation that comes to us in the form of drawings that it doesn't have to, but often it does that someone sends us just a sheet of drawings or, a, uh, you know, some some rough drawings of characters and sometimes in their world and we just think ah oh, that's really really interesting there's a character that that i'm immediately interested in that i want to spend some more some more time with i think that the the big the big fault that people um uh, fall prey to when they're pitching kids shows is they imagine them to be older than they are so we get a lot of shows that people say oh this is for six to eleven year olds and there's actually preschool and often people uh, you know they think things have to be cute and sweet and that immediately makes them very young and again we urge people to go and look at Cartoon Network and go and look at Nickelodeon and, and these shows you know and figure out how your show is going to fit next to Adventure Time or the regular show or Spongebob or Counterfeit Cat. I keep saying Counterfeit Cat because that's our show and it's on Disney, uh, Disney XD. And, you know, is it going to suddenly feel much younger or is it going to be a nice support or a nice companion piece, a nice companion project for something that's already on there? And then the other thing is, is you know, let's try and make something, is that the, the tools, uh, it's the same as live action, the tools are available now to make, make an animation. Um, and if you've got those skills or you know someone who's got those skills, then make something. Make a one minute or a 30 second character piece that just demonstrates who your character is. And if you get, if you nail that, that that'll be enough. Then we'll, you know, someone like us will be on board. We'll say that character is really interesting. We can build on that. Yeah. Fantastic. All about character then. All about character. Absolutely. Yeah. If you look at, you know, if you look at the best, which is Pixar, you know, I remember so clearly the first trailer I saw for Pixar and it was it was um, you know the main character trying to put on his belt and it was just a really funny piece of animation which told you everything you needed to know about that character and you know and if someone had if someone had sent that to us it would have uh, or something like that to us we would have immediately jumped on that and said that's brilliant that character I understand that character yeah. uh, I want to I want to know their story that's that's really that's the silver bullet Let's talk about sub submissions and how people get in, yeah. get in contact. Yeah. So we have a, a website, wildtoodstudios.com, and there is a menu item there called submissions. And absolutely anyone can submit an idea to us. So it's a completely open uh, system. We, we'd closed it for uh, almost a year, actually, because we had so, such a huge backlog of submissions. And we also had uh, you know, half a dozen shows that we wanted to produce. But we've just opened it again. We just opened it in January. And so we're really uh, excited to be receiving some some lovely, interesting uh, submissions. I have a read through there. It's pretty clear that the um, the system for creating an account on the website is a bit clunky at the moment, and we're trying to figure out how to make it less clunky. But once you've got through that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And we ask six questions about your project, and we ask you to send us uh, whatever materials you've got, you know, in in the form of a link to a you know a video or a link to a uh, a Dropbox folder or something yeah. and we take about six to eight weeks generally to get back we try and do it quicker but we ask you to allow us for, uh, six to eight weeks to respond because we give everyone feedback on their projects Brilliant. we don't just we don't just sort of say no so uh, we're looking for projects for kids six to eleven that's live action animation we're looking for adult comedy animation or live action yeah. and then we're looking for genre pieces so uh, feature length or serialized or um or uh, yeah serialized content so uh, sci-fi fantasy horror thriller um that sort of thing excellent a friend of mine does comedy songs how about that for, for yes comedy comedy songs um comedy songs are really really interesting to us uh, just to have a bit of edge and feel a bit contemporary and not feel it's like jeeves and worcester or or Gilbert and Sullivan doing yeah. um, doing rather clever songs with yeah. long words in. Yeah, 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 fantastic. I, I love uh, I love the fact that it's uh, it, it's just about great ideas. And I suppose the other thing to say is that we're we're trying to keep a youthful feel to the content that we're producing. So the protagonists, you know, quite often we get things from people uh, in their sort of thirties, and the the protagonists are going through sort of marriage problems or work problems or. Uh, and we say, 
we say, I mean, they're very good projects sometimes, but our focus tends to be more on the kind of 16 to 24 year old protagonists and and the things that they're worrying about, you know, which is social media, friends, relationships, school, college, first job, as opposed to, you know, getting getting work and and living living not living with their parents for the first. Those are the sort of things that we like to see yeah. stories about, rather than sort of more middle aged concerns. What are the next big things on the horizon for Wild Seed? Sure. So um, so we've just finished the first series of Counterfeit Cat, which is on Disney XD, and we're hoping that that's going to get picked up and roll again later in the year. We're making a... Uh, we're just about to announce a thriller that we're making, which I can't uh, talk about, but that will be um, a, a serialised web series. As I say, we have a movie, which we have a movie pipeline of development, which I'm hoping we're going to be able to announce the next project uh, in the next couple of months. So it's pretty busy. And uh, for everyone that wants to get in touch, it's directly to wildseedstudios.com. Yes. So hello is our hello at wildseedstudios.com is our general email, um, and wildseedstudios.com is the website where people can make submissions. It's been very illuminating to uh, to spend some time and have a chat. So thank you very much for taking time out for us. And I hope for everyone watching with a great idea, get in touch with Wild Seed Studios. We really look forward to it. And thanks very much, Adam. It's been great to speak to you. No worries. Speak to you again. Take care, Miles. Bye-bye for now. Bye.